What's up, fellas? In this video, we're going to be looking at some brazing with an arc welder. I'm going to be trying several techniques. We're going to be doing some different beads in this, and I'm also going to show you how to remove brazing flux. What's up, fellas? In this video, I am going to attempt to turn this worthless Harbor Freight welder, this absolutely worthless Chinese product, into a brazing tool. I have made a little tip here I'm going to test out that has a tungsten electrode in it. And we're going to attempt to braze this cut mark in this pipe. I'm not going to use the arc to melt the metal. I'm just going to use the arc as an extremely hot torch to kind of scan the area and get it red hot and then introduce the, the brazing rod. There we go. I think it's gassing up hardcore. This is the TIG attempt where I attempted to use a tungsten rod fashioned into a quick TIG torch. And the outgassing from the brazing rod turned it into a, a freaking cutting torch somehow. That was kind of interesting something I might have to look into. I mean, it was literally boring a hole. Look at that. It sounded like a jet even. This here, I think, is some of the stuff where I tried just the wand. I didn't go back over that with the carbon rod, I don't think. This one here was done with the carbon rod and the brazing rod in tandem, and it was washed over with just the carbon rod to kind of seal the deal so to say Unbelievable amount of smoke. I got a clear room. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Hey, one more try. Burn up. 
Okay, now I'm gonna drill a hole. No go with the hole. I am going blind. I gotta stop. This is going to be a very violent reaction. The vapor pressure of tin inside this brass is going to cause a huge boiling of tin. That's what all the gas you're going to be seeing is coming from. I think the, the vapor pressure is like a couple of hundred PSI's or something when it's this hot. So here we go. I think what I'm going to try first is some low amperage. I'm going to set it at about 40 amps, which is probably way too high. Here we go. Dang it. Okay, I'm going to turn the amperage way up. It's not letting me do nothing like that. No matter what I do, I'm not able to sustain an arc. Yeah, uh-uh. It's just blowing itself out. So what I'm going to do is go back to the carbon rod. I think I found a good method to get that carbon rod to work. That basically was just a blobbed up mess. There's really not much to see here. The carbon rod method by putting the raising rod in the circuit seemed to be having some promise. So we'll try that out real quick. Okay, that was kind of working. Yeah, 
actually seems like it's working pretty good. Might have to lay another bead, but the process is definitely blinding. Set the table on fire. I got to air out, guys, but that seemed like it might have ran a decent bead. So, here we are. I'm about to show you the process I use to remove brazing flux. Now, it involves some light chipping. If you need the stuff to look really good, you don't have to chip it. But... What we're going to be doing is heating this up with a blowtorch until we know it's really hot. Almost to the point where we think we might have that flux near its melting point. It doesn't have to hit the melting point. Man, look at those holes that got shot in there from the gas coming out of that rod. So anyway, we're going to get it hot with a torch. And then we're going to spray it with a water bottle. You have to have some kind of spray bottle that can give you a fine mist because you don't want to cool it off too quick. You want it to be on a mist and what's going to happen is this flux is going to turn into a white powdery substance the next time you heat it up. And when you spray it again, some dirty, nasty water will come dripping off this thing and that will be the flux that's falling off of here. So let's get on with it. I'll show you how I do it. Okay. This is how we do it. This is much harder to do on a very large piece. If this was a small copper coil or something, we would have already had it removed.
Okay, and again. This is a quick clip of how to remove brazing flux. We're gonna take a blowtorch and a spray bottle. And we're gonna get this off here as quick as possible. It makes a little bit of a mess, but what's gonna happen is the flux after the second heat up is gonna turn into a white powder after it's been sprayed. Then after the it's sprayed from that point, it'll start washing off as a dirty water. So here we go. See a lot of it's already starting to wash off of their big flakes. Now it's dry again and it has like this crust to it, this white crust looking compound and that's what you want to wash off is the white crust you don't want to reheat that crust to a point that it melts again let me explain this to you here this is the flux in the same state we're putting it this is hydrated flux so what we're doing is the flux that's melted we're going to spray that and it's going to turn into this once we spray that hot flux then we take the, the spray bottle and spray it again and wash this away. You don't want to heat the torch again and heat up the flux, remelting it. We want to produce this white powder on the part and spray it away. So here we go. I'm going to turn, get it hot and make some white powder. See that? I don't know if you can see that splurt out like that. That's the white powder we want to make. And then we're going to spray it off. We let it sit a little bit too long that time. That's the white stuff we want to produce and then wash away. Because basically what we're doing is rehydrating the flux rod or something. I'm not exactly sure. 's much what you get there's a couple of pieces right there sometimes it might be best to kind of chip away what you can but for the lion's share of it I use this process every time I braze now the part comes out looking halfway decent there's a little speck of it right there left like I said there's I, I do bust out a picking tool because you'll be there forever turning that back into its hydrated state The lighting in here is just horrible. I don't know of any spot that would let you see that that technique cleans it up pretty good. 99.9%. .9%. You still got to do a little picking and then go back at it one more time sometimes, but pretty sweet deal. So, fellas, here's the piece. This is the TIG attempt where I attempted to use a tungsten rod 
fashioned into a quick TIG torch. And the outgassing from the brazing rod turned it into a, a freaking cutting torch somehow. That was kind of interesting. Something I might have to look into. I mean, it was literally boring a hole. Look at that. It sounded like a jet even. This here, I think, is some of the stuff where I tried just the wand. I didn't go back over that with the carbon rod, I don't think. This one here was done with the carbon rod and the brazing rod in tandem. And it was washed over with just the carbon rod to kind of seal the deal, so to say. It appears that it did in fact take. Now, I don't know of any scenario where you would want to do this. I just wanted to see how good it would work because I was interested in repurposing that piece of crap Harbor Freight torch. I thought maybe I could get the arc to act as a flame and just heat the metal. That was my goal, fellas. If you're wondering where I thought, where the hell I thought I was going with this. Because we all knew it wasn't going to work well, right? I mean, but I, I wanted to just try and dial that flame in. And it vitrified the flux. It turned the flux into glass. It's a lot different than the flux that you get from traditional brazing. This stuff does not come off the way regular brazing does. That's a little TIG torch hit right there. I might have to get a TIG torch and make me a little drill bit because it seems like that TIG just wanted to poke a hole right through that. So there you have it. It could potentially be feasible. By looking at that, I wouldn't say so, but this one here, I mean, this was a first attempt, guys. No practice, no technique. I started to develop a technique by the time we got here, okay? We started here, worked our way into here. We came over here, got a really nice seal there, I believe, that's, that would probably hold air. Oh, there's a porous hole there. But a lot of it, I don't see any like undercuts, you know what I mean? And then we got to this here where I started to develop the technique of making the arc hit the brazing rod first just a little bit. And then after you uh, lead, get some material down, walk back over it with the arc bead. So don't know that I'm going to take this any further based on these results. It was just too hard to do and my helmet was constantly turning off and on so it blinded the hell out of me. But I've always wanted to see this. I've typed it in several times waiting for a guy to post this video and here it is.